Hi, and welcome back to 8-Bit Resurgence. My name is Thomas, and today we're going to be talking about the 1581 case. Uh, in the last episode that I recorded, um, I introduced you all to the 1581 Enhanced, um, which is a board that I created um, that has an alternate power supply option on it and uh, works quite well. Um, s when I originally started the project, I um, actually started with the case. Um, I picked up an original 1581 that you see here and this um, for about $300 I got a filthy broken 1581 that had a bad drive and a non-working logic board. Um, I fixed it up, um, replaced the drive, uh, got the board working, it was a couple of bad chips on it, and, uh, and then I, I started with um, the case. So looking at the case, um, it's very iconic, obviously. It has the, that slot um, where the floppy goes with the button that comes through the face and the drive is actually contained in behind. Um, and then if you look at the profile of the case, it's a very unique um, Commodore design. Um, now when you, if you're designing a, a case or, or recreating one, um, you really have to design it based on the strengths of your printer. And you have to know your printer well, and if you know your printer well and you know what it can do, um, then you can do some pretty amazing things with it. But you have to design to, to its strengths. Now this particular case would not print nicely on the FDM printers that I have. Um, because if you see right here, there's a, a, an overhang. So if you're printing and this, this bottom is on the print bed and you, how um, 3D printing works, if you don't know, with an FDM printer anyway, um, you have a 3D model and you slice it into layers and then the printer prints each layer and builds on the next. That's how it, um, it creates a 3D model. Now when, when it would be printing and it would print up um, to the, the point where you have this ledge, um, it would be printing fine. But as soon as you hit here, it has to print in thin air. And because we have gravity, um, the plastic would just fall. Uh, so you have to put support material underneath something like this. Now, whenever you put support material underneath something and you're printing on top of that, you get a rough finish. It's not nice and smooth. Um, like it is here. You can see right there, it's nice and smooth. So I designed, um, redesigned the case, or I, I copied this case, and uh, but I changed it so that it would print nicely without any support material, at least the bottom, um, on my 3D printer. And um, yes, I mean, people will say, yeah, but you can clean up that underside part um, but personally I don't like having to clean models afterwards you know I'll drill holes where screws are supposed to go through just print them a little smaller so I can have a nice clean hole but other than that I don't like cleaning up models after after the fact so I redesigned I started with the bottom redesigned that this is the um, 3d printed case that I developed and you'll see um, here, you see how this is a, a curve instead of a ledge. So that prints just gradually further out and it's self-supporting. Uh, makes for uh, a nice clean print on the print bed. Now, the second reason I wanted to redesign it was because of the face. Now, the face, again, I just showed that to you. It has the, um, that slot. Now, it is possible to recreate the face with this exact profile, but aligning the drive isn't the easiest. Um, sometimes the drives that you get 
most of the time the drives don't have the button on it and you have to develop a 3d printed button now 3d printed buttons because of the orientation uh, that you have to print it um, as it goes through this hole it's um, going to bump because of the layers and it's gonna if it rubs at all it's gonna make a kind of a bumping feeling when you're pushing the, the button in I don't like that so I wanted a, a much easier um, solution also the internal um, mounts the um, position of the the floppy drive um, in the actual drive mechanism itself is not consistent um, thereby you would need a different style or elevation of the mount um, inside for each type of drive me mech and the face the buttons aren't in the same so there'd be so many different variations um, I'd come across a um, magazine way back when it was a Commodore world I think it was and they had a drive uh, it was a 1581 case but they had uh, cut out the face and put a floppy drive in it just a PC floppy drive um, I really like that look so that's kind of the look I was going for and because um, PC floppy drives are um, very standard in in the physical dimensions of it and the mounting locations uh, that would allow me to make a standard mount inside and a standard face on the front also the face wouldn't require um, any special uh, configuration for the drive and it would use less support material because of the orientation that I need to print the face in order to get those um, features the iconic features that you see um, on this drive so um, I came up with this design this is a a completed one populated with a board and a lot um, it looks very much the same as a 1581 uh, on the right is the original and obviously on the left is my 3d printed one in a natural translucent and from left uh, to right from my perspective anyway uh, is the power switch uh, the device selector um, or sorry the power switch power plug device selection and the two IEC serial ports on the right side um, exactly uh, the same position everything vents are the same um, height it's all the same um, so that's um, the case on the outside so let's take a look at one um, with a drive mechanism uh, installed in it and you can kind of see what it looks like um, here you can see the the floppy drive um, poking through the front um, the same mounting location for the LEDs right there and uh, cable onto the board this switch um, I put in here it's kind of a, a utilitarian hole I put into this case um, it can be used for the alternate power supply uh, if you want um, it can also be used for the uh, the jiffy dos switching between the normal dos rom and the jiffy dos rom in this particular drive um, it's switching the um, the drive rom uh, the the drive itself is um, in this case it's a converted uh, sfd 2031b samsung drive so I don't have that uh, that conversion board right here um, which I have shown in the previous video um, so the the drive itself um, it opens the exact same way there's a uh, the lid I have heat sets there and there in the lid um, all the mounting locations on this case I do put heat sets in uh, makes for a much cleaner installation and uh, the lid it has just like the original has a rib right along there and then the face has hooks in it I'll open up another one and, and give you a better look um, and then it just uh, it attaches the exact same way it just goes into that 
that uh, ridge and the hooks in there and goes into the groove all the way around and it's closed. Um, so it closes up exactly like um, the original. It's other than being 3D printed, it, it functions exactly the same. Um, so this one is an empty one. I wanted to show that to you, give you a better idea of what it looks inside um, with the drive removed. So again, we just open it up exact same way. We lift this, rotates it out of off that ridge. And then uh, the face comes out the exact same way. It just lifts out of these. There's uh, right in here, there's four holes and uh, or slots. And then these these little tabs here, these three tabs go into the, those spots. Um, there's the little LED board and the little wiring harness that plugs into the 1541 drive board. Um, you could hardwire it if you wanted to. Um, for the purposes of this video anyway, it's handier to have it as a plug. Um, I have been just using plugs for all my drives. The, um, the face, it prints in this orientation. So this is the bottom when it prints. This, there is support material um, inside when I print it, but uh, again, you don't see that in, you don't see the inside uh, when it's assembled, so it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit rough. The outside is nice and smooth. Um, there's a label space. I've uh, created two different labels, a black one and the original kind of a beige um, label, and that fits right on there and the LEDs go in there. Um, what goes in there next is the drive mounting plate. And it's a, a generic plate that I, I came up with and it's adjustable. It has uh, four slots and they mount in at uh, these four locations here. There's heat sets. So you'd install the board. There's four screws there. You take them out. Again, heat sets in the bottom screw the board in then you would attach the drive to this and with the drive attached it would look like that so it just screws onto the the, the bottom of the drive and it just uses the default original uh, mounting locations that are on every five and a quarter inch floppy drive so it doesn't really matter which floppy drive you use especially if you're using that adapter board um, like I had mentioned in the previous video, I haven't come across one that doesn't work. Um, this particular one is a Panasonic drive. I had looked for a conversion for this particular model of drive and I couldn't find it yet. That little conversion board does the job. So I don't even bother trying to convert them anymore. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And then when it's attached to the board or the drive, and then it just um, slides into here and it goes on to these, um, the four pins here. And then you put the face, when you're assembling it, you would put the face on here and then you put the drive in and then you just slide it into the opening and you make it flush and you put the screws in and you tighten them and you're done. Um, if there's any variation at all, um, there is some movement in the mount that allows you to um, to adjust it but normally in all the drives that I've found um, you put it in and you slide it all the way forward and that makes it flush you tighten the screws and you're finished so it's it was really nice in in the design and that I could uh, come up with a, a mounting bracket that was uh, generic enough that I didn't have to worry about making different kinds of brackets for different kinds of drives I just print one and I'm good. So that's, um, that's how the drive um, came out. Uh, it's really just uh, four pieces. It's, it's, the, it's the, the bottom, the face, the lid, and this um, internal mounting bracket. Um, now, there are different uh, colors, obviously being 3D printed, you can do um, anything you want with it. Um, I had come up with uh, an SX64 style. I really like those machines. 
and uh, I thought it would be really great to have a a floppy drive that's reminiscent of that uh, that style of machine. So I came up with a a black faced one with a a black drive and uh, black bottom, and a, I use a a silver. It's it's kind of a has a little bit of a fleck in in the plastic. It looks very similar to the um, SX the top of the SX so um, I did that one and uh, again you'll see you might notice that the I don't know it's pretty dark in that picture um, the switch is tall and that's the taller switch that I got a deal on so all the drives that I make with my boards I just print with a taller switch uh, cases that I have sold to people I print with a standard uh, switch that everybody's been buying and putting into their drives the same one that's in the original 1581 so that's um that's really it for the um the 3d printable printed uh 1581 case um it's been a lot of fun to build and uh and i'm really happy with the results um i've been using my 1581s for some time now and uh, and they just they work as as nice as the original. I really really like the the style um, having the the physical the the floppy face coming right through um, the front. What's what I find nice about that is um, if you know th these are all all old um, drive mechs that we have um, nowadays. It's hard to find any new ones um, so if they do fail it's really um, quite a simple task to just pop a new drive in you don't have to worry if say you had built a one with these these other 3d printed cases where they have the the original face on it um, you had a samsung in there you picked up a sony the button's completely different so the face um, the drive won't fit in the face so this one it doesn't matter what kind of drive you you know you had a uh, panasonic in there and you found an alps drive or you know you found a neutronics as long as it works um you plug it in you know provided you have that uh, small adapter board or you found a conversion to turn it into an amiga drive um, it just slides into the opening uh, bolts in the same spot and you're off and running again so it's it's a lot um I think it's it's a lot easier to um service yourself. Um so that's why I designed it the way I did. So anyway, that's it. I didn't want this to be again a, a super long video, uh, but I did want to show off the 3D printed cases that I'd come up with. Um if you do like the video. Um, please like it and uh, if you're interested I'd appreciate uh, if you subscribe to to my channel I have a lot of plans of of other videos that I'd like to come up with um, and post for you guys um, so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time okay bye